Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. My name is Shikin and today I'll be explaining to you guys about the stages of motor learning. People need to progress through distinct stages or phases in order to learn a new motor skills. Therefore, there are two models that are proposed about the motor learning stages. The first one is the fit and posture three stage model. In 1967, they have proposed this three, three stage model which consists of cognitive stage, associative stage, and also the autonomous stage. The first stage is the cognitive stage. It is a stage where the learner is introduced to simple rules and instructions to have a basic understanding of the movements involved in a certain skills or techniques. At this stage, the athlete is more reliant on the external feedback to improve their proprioception and it is not capable to have self-correction abilities yet. Thus, it is crucial for the athlete to have a clear concept of the desired movement. In relation to squash, this stage is often associated with teaching young children or older people with little to no experience with bracket sports. In terms of coaching drills, the coach will focus on simple and easy fits to give chances for the player to hit the ball without any complex movement. This method can help them to focus more on the racket swing, body orientation, and the final leg movements. At this stage also, the coach will provide immediate feedback on any issues that need correction to ensure that the difficulty of the task is still manageable by the player. The coach should also give positive feedbacks for any correct movement executed and provide constructive feedback for any incorrect or wrong movement that is performed. Hence, the player shall develop the pro, the pro proprioceptive awareness of the movements executed. Next is the associative stage. At this stage, the movement patterns are more refined and consistent. The player is now able to self-correct and have better motor control. They can also include environmental information into the required movements. During coaching at this stage, the skills are tested under the more complex situation to mimic the actual demands of the game. One of the typical shot sequences that can be used during practice are boast, drive, boast, or whenever the player has well-developed simple routines. And the third stage. This is the autonomous stage. Achieving this stage requires an extensive amount of practice. When the athletes are at this stage, they will have very few variabilities in performance and are able to self-correct themselves whenever an error is committed. To achieve this stage, it relies on the athlete's capabilities, experience, and as well as coaching styles, such as the instructions given, alongside the task variables and practice structure. A regular squash player can achieve this stage faster than a novice or immature squash player. They can consistently execute powerful strokes regardless of the ball direction coming towards them. The next model in the stages of motor learning is the Gentiles two-stage model. In 1972, and Gentile proposed the Gentiles two-stage progression model in motor learning. The stage one is the initial stage. It has two goals that needs to be achieved by the learner, which is number one, to acquire a movement pattern for the skill learn to enable some degree of success and Goal number two is to able to discriminate between regulatory and non-regulatory conditions in the environmental context. As for stage two, which is the later stage, it has three goals, which is the adaptation of the movement patterns, following the demands of the performance situation, consistency in executing the movement patterns in any situation, and performing the skills acquired with an economy of effort. In stage one, you need to be able to discriminate between the regulatory and also the non-regulatory conditions. Regulatory conditions are the characteristics and environment which directly influences the movement required to reach a goal. In the context of squash, one of the examples is the speed of the swinging arm and also the leg stances. 
As for the non-regulatory, it is the characteristics and environment that do not directly influence the movement required to reach a goal. For example, the surface of the court. And next, at the stage 2, we focus on the closed skill and also the open skills. Closed skill is a fixation of movement pattern to allow consistent action goal achievement. For example, tossing the ball to hit a serve. And for open skills, it is a diversification of movement pattern that can adapt to any performance situation. For example, a forehand straight drive serve receiving the shot from the opponent. And that is all for me. Thank you and have a nice day.